Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Alanis and Dr. Stevens. My name is Sue Soler and I am the principal at Central Elementary School. I would like to present a snapshot of Central Elementary at this time. Central supports a safe, supportive, and collaborative culture of high achievement through collaboration of goals, high expectations, and differentiated instruction. Teachers and students collaborate to come up with student-driven goals, which lead to effective teaching in every classroom. Our teachers incorporate the use of a guaranteed and viable curriculum in both reading and math through the use of benchmark workshop and Envision Math. As a team, we have set specific data-based goals. Students in kindergarten through fifth grade participate in MindUp curriculum as a tool to enhance social-emotional learning. Historical trends indicate that by increasing the percentage of students attaining the 61st percentile in both reading and math and WEA, we will see an increased level of success on the state assessments, specifically iLearn in grades 3, 4, and 5. The following graphs gives us a snapshot of our third through fifth grade students and how they are predicted to perform on the iLearn according to in the Indiana Map Growth Linking Study. 34% of our third grade students are predicted to score at or above proficiency in math and 27% are predicted to score at or above proficiency in reading. 25% of our fourth grade students are predicted to score at or above proficiency in math and 32% in reading. 24% of our 5th grade students are predicted to score at or above proficiency in math and 42% in reading. After analyzing our NWEA data, we at Central came up with some initiatives that we feel will target the learning gaps in both reading and math. Some of the next steps include direct vocabulary instruction in every 2nd through 5th grade classroom, guided math and reading instruction, small group instruction in our virtual classrooms, social emotional learning in grades K to 5, and all things literacy. Elliot Dickinson, I'm one of the fourth grade teachers at Central Elementary School, and I'm here today to talk to you about a new initiative that we have that focuses on academic grade level vocabulary. Um, you may be asking yourself, why are we focusing on that? As a grade level, uh, we went through and looked at our NOEA scores, and we identified vocabulary as one of the areas of focus. Um, we decided that we needed to come up with words that were important to students. We constructed lists of academic vocabulary words that we thought were essential, and then we wanted to make sure that we had words that went along with both content areas, math and reading. Um, in order to teach these words, we're going to use Marzano's six-step process. Uh, the first three steps focus on introducing the new term, and then the last three steps focus on uh, addressing different types of multiple exposures we can have that help the students shape and sharpen their understanding. So, in doing this, uh, we identify the word, and we uh, tell students what it is, we come up with a friendly description or explanation of it, we restate the new word, and then we have them uh, come up with an example in their own words. We, we shape it as a class, and we work on, them, uh, work on coming up with that definition together. We show the new word by making a picture or a symbol or graphic representation, and then discuss that new word using our vocabulary notebooks, which I'll show you in just a minute. After that, students reflect on the new word, they revisit their vocabulary notebooks from time to time, uh, and then they will apply the new word or new words through games that allow them to play around with the terms. Swanson, I teach third grade at Central, and I'm here just to give a quick overview of what guided instruction looks like in the classroom today. So guided instruction is an opportunity for teachers to observe and monitor students' application of a targeted skill and then respond to those needs based upon their findings. So prior to guided instruction taking place, two things need to occur. First thing, teacher has to establish an I can statement and communicate it to the students. That's so they know what to expect. Secondly, the teacher is giving a direct instruction mini lesson, and then once those two things are accomplished, guided instruction starts. So guided instruction has some components that the teacher is going to present a targeted skill or task to the students. They have time to think and collaborate, annotate. As they're doing that, the teacher is walking around observing what the students are speaking about and what they're putting down. And then lastly, based upon the teacher's observations and monitoring, they are then breaking the students into needs-based groups. 
Well, much of that still is happening today, although it looks slightly different than in the past. So first of all, that targeted task or question is still being posed to the students. But rather than them working in close groups or sharing materials, students are socially distant. Maybe they're talking across an aisle to each other, but teachers are still able to monitor those conversations. They're able to see student annotations by either having do them do things on Google Slides, through Google Forms, taking screenshots. If they're in the classroom in person, you can the teacher then can have proximity and move around to see what the students are doing. Based upon that, that purposeful proximity, teachers can then establish needs-based groups. Now, th that used to look like students in groups coming back to one area of the classroom, other students rotating around literacy groups or math groups or stations. That's not happening currently, but that practice is still in place. If it's virtual, breakout groups are happening with your most needs-based interventions happening in one group and then you're rotating through those students went to fixed errors or remissions with that one group of students, or the teacher has the mobility around the classroom rather than the students. The teacher can choose a place where they can have proximity to groups of learners that might need intervention, or maybe they're hitting just a few kids as they're moving throughout the classroom to say, hey, I noticed that you said this, let's talk about this, and having brief conversations to provide that specific correction and intervention on that skill before allowing them to have independent practice time. So again, guided instruction is still taking place in the classroom today. Day. It does look different than in the past. The classroom volume might be louder in person. There might be many breakout rooms happening when we're virtual, but guided instruction is still taking place because it is essential to making sure that our students are getting what they need in order to be successful and demonstrating what they can do in terms of their learning target. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Sydney Hawkins and I'm the second grade virtual teacher here at Central Elementary and I'm here to talk to you today about how I use remediation in small groups in my virtual classroom. When I remediate with my class, I tend to pull a couple kids who are having a really hard time understanding the skill or the lesson during reading or math. I pull them based on their body language shown during the Google Meet, their participation, and just little hand signals that we use throughout our lesson. I will just give them a short and condensed version of the lesson that I just taught and then I will go and release them to do the assignment that I post for that lesson. And then I'll go in to Seesaw, that's usually what it's over, um, look at their stuff to see if they're really, really understanding. And if they're not, I will pull them at the end of the day during our group time, and I will give them a simpler version of the skill. That way they just have the basis, and then later on when I pull them again, We'll just keep applying it, applying it, applying it until they get it. So there's a little tidbit on how I implement remediation in small groups in my classroom. Have a great day. Hello, I am Central Elementary's homeschool advisor, Mrs. Moore. I work with students on an individual basis. Reasons may include, but are not limited to, social emotional skills, mind up curriculum in the classroom, sudden changes in behavior, academic concerns, anger behavior management, family changes due to death, divorce, or separation, social skills, friendship concerns, building self-confidence, I link parents, guardian, and staff to community services. In the classroom, we always follow our mind up curriculum and focus on the students trying to regulate their breathing and teaching breathing techniques. I also do a mind up morning. So in the morning, um, right after the announcements, we do some slow breathing techniques that help the students start their day. I have, um, this is my first year here at Central Elementary and I am really enjoying working with the team of faculty and staff that we have here at Portage Township Schools. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Katie Lovell and I am the Library Media Center Specialist here at Central Elementary School and I wanted to talk about our approach to literacy. We at Central are always trying to improve our students, whether that means taking our excellent readers and pushing them higher or taking our kids who maybe need a little bit more help to get to that mark. Um, although we have a large focus in AR, we don't want students just reading for the point. So we're always looking for new ways to engage and intrigue our kids. Um, we offer all kinds of incentives. We're 
we're always looking for different ways to get the kids just excited about genuinely reading. I really feel that people who aren't readers just haven't read the right book yet. So we really push the kids to find something that they enjoy. We buy a lot of it and we help them to read. Um, one approach we took this year is we took our kids who were on the bubble for Nuia and we made small groups. Mrs. Solar and myself delivered those books to those students. We made a huge deal about it and we read with them virtually and they loved it. They begged for us to have a second small group and we have seen growth in those students. Another thing we did was our virtual literacy night. Um, at Central we're usually really big with family involvement and events because as most of you know it starts at home. So we actually work together as a staff. We all all read short stories and we put it together to have a virtual literacy night that we streamed online and that way parents could be at home they could read with the kids from the safety of their home they got to see us as staff we had a huge turnout it was excellent and right now we are currently working on a readathon and in the first three days collectively as a school we have read more than 29,000 minutes in three days out of 400 kids so whether our students are virtual or in person literacy is always one of our numbers number one goals with our kids and working to make improvements is what we strive for here. Here are some of the ways, exciting ways, that we celebrate our students at Central Elementary. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share a quick snapshot of some of the great things that are happening at Central Elementary School.